what's going on YouTube? This is P from PBKM, and this time around, I'm doing another game review as well as a few other things. Sounds like a whole new show on the format this time, but let's get this started off. This week, I was playing Fuse. Well, not this week, but this time. All right, I was going to sleep on Fuse, admittedly, because, you know, don't get me wrong, Team Fortress, Deathmatch, whatever, it was fun, but I really wasn't into that like that. But they've done a good job with this. This is a good multiplayer game to play. Although I've only played in the single player campaign. Um, basically, the four people that you get to choose actually have nice types of weapons. Um, the one with the crazy shotgun, the one with the crazy um, bolt gun, and then the girl with the antimatter rifle, and then the guy with the um, shield. That is very interesting. I have to say, I actually had lots of fun playing it. It's quite fun and entertaining. Mostly because um, these are supposed to be made by the makers of Ratchet and Clank. So it's crazy guns and damage and that type of thing. So I like the effects that those fuse weapons give. And fuse is kind of like this power that kind of meshes with people and stuff. Not really getting into all that. What makes it fun is the fact that you get to just take out guys and make them blow up a lot. So, you know, there's nothing more fun than taking on characters, knocking out large amounts of bad guys, and making a big mess. And that's what Fuse provides. Now, at first, I didn't think Fuse was going to be fun because the, the style that they decided to go with as far as look, most of the games I play that look like that, they're fun for about 10 minutes and then you just kind of, eh. And I thought that's what this was going to be like. So, you know, in the first 10 minutes, you know, having to get through those big beginning long um, entrance, you know, the long cut scene and stuff to try and tell me the story, it really didn't matter much to me. Um, once you get past that, you get past the learning stage and you actually get the weapons and they let you just play. And it's fun. And it will actually take you in for a while. Um, pretty much the combat is pretty much semi-gears of war because you have to hide behind cover. But you move through it room by room is sort of how that works. So you get a nice little swarm in a room of people and they're wearing armor and stuff. And they also have a nice mix of um, heavily armored um, enemies that come into play too. So it kind of gives you a nice little mix of... Um, rough and tumble fast, rough and tumble slow, and okay, I might need to use some strategy on this. And some minor puzzle solving in it too. Nothing too heavy, too amazing or whatnot. So all in all, it's actually a really nice balanced game. I think the biggest problem is, is that I'm going to end up just saying that it's too short. and It's really not very detailed and it's not amazing. It's a simple game. But, like I've said before in some of these, sometimes simplicity is what gets you better replay value. They also have skill trees, which I'm still exploring. Um, first thing that I did notice is, in one player, you can switch from person to person, if need be, by use of the select button and um, one of the corresponding buttons on your own control pad. I don't know how it works to play this. I play this on the Xbox. Um... And they all level up together, so when you get skill points with one, you get them with all of them, so to speak. So that was definitely something nice. So that way I wouldn't have to play through each individual person to get them leveled out before I really like how they function. So um, that, you also can buy um, like a team um, ability that the whole team gets to share. So that that's cool too. But. Um, all in all, just look at it. If it's your thing, try it out. If it's not, so much, whatever. Um, pretty much 65 for it ain't bad. But, you know, I I'm willing to throw out at least a good 40 on this. But, like, but, you know, definitely got to make sure you got some friends to play. Because, um, all in all, even though I was in the one-player mode, the only problem I had was my camera, you got locked early in stage one. But I died, and then that was fixed, and it never happened again. Um, everything else that went on with it basically comes down to just playing and regular gameplay. Um, nothing overly crazy about it or whatnot. So that's the cool thing, and I'm going to kind of nice.
So, all in all, uh, probably four out of five, um, seven out of ten feels on doing that. So, you know, that's just giving you an idea how much I kind of like the way it works. Um, so, that's pretty much it. Enjoy the rest of the review. And we'll be picking up additional content after the review is done. Um, so, pretty much, um, keep watching.
comes down the stairs. Okay, what's going on YouTube? I'm back. This is Pete. Um, this is usually where I do the updates and such, but this time around, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit. Um, number one, um, I still sell AMP stuff with Amway. So you can definitely go by the site, www.amway.com slash pbkm, and you can go find you something to purchase there. Um, usually, um, things I pretty much say is like um, Lexia Clean, or um, get, the, get the dish drops, get the dishwashing um, stuff or laundry detergent or something like that. And, you know, that's not a real good buy for me, but that's something to start with. Um, energy drinks, because they're all B12 based, plus we have shots and we're getting a whole bunch of other stuff too. Um, basically, what I pretty much need you to do is, because this is the only way you can su really support me through it and whatnot, other than if I ever get my music in the stores and you buy my music is just go by there and just buy something from time to time. It doesn't have to be big. To be honest, I prefer that you buy kind of some small stuff, but you buy it like every month or so, once a month or something like that. Or if you get something that's really helpful for you, because that means you're going to continue to keep using it. But you know what? That's pretty much enough about that. I'm still going to introduce those products and stuff a little bit later and such and try to incorporate that more into this format. But now I'm going to move to the updates. Okay, this week I've been working mostly, so I haven't been up to a whole lot. Um, plus side is, though, is I did get my um, legendary um, version copy, which you cannot see because it's so dark, for Skyrim. That was the biggest thing that happened this week. I'm um, still waiting to pay off the Ouya because I'm definitely looking forward to that gaming console. Um, pretty much, if you want information on that, there's a Kickstarter on it. It's almost better you Google that than to have me tell you about it. But it's basically um, a miniature console that's basically Android-powered um, and pretty much um, can be used as a, like an Android device slash possible set-top box, depending on what apps you use and what's actually allowed in it by the time it's all done. But that's not really the point right now. Um, also, two, um, pretty much ARM and I haven't really gotten any, we've got some music done. We haven't gotten any freestyles recorded. That's our bad. But we've been watching movies again. We know how much you like the movies. And I'm going to throw that in by the end of this, all this, too. Um, but pretty much, um, between work and, um, the other stuff, um, I started playing Wushu. Trap got me playing, um... Wushu it is not a bad um, MMO, and you know you're wondering what Wushu is. It's an MMO, and right now this is my character hired. As you kind of notice, I have a theme with that going on. Right now, hired is pretty much learning the ways of Shaolin because that's the that's the path I chose for him, and we're pretty much just getting started with that now. Um, probably not very deep into this just yet, so, but, um, thus far, as I learn more about it, I'll tell you more about this one and such. I don't know if I'm going to actually do capture on this one, because some of these MMOs can be kind of hard to really explain, but the cool thing is, is now we got something coming to console. So, um, I've been doing that, um, Marvel Heroes came out, um, on the 4th. So I'm going to be doing some more of that because I already started that while they were doing betas. Um, Final Fantasy um, 14 starts off the um, third tier of um, beta testing. So 
we get to um, go live with our actual characters, which I'm wondering how that's going to work, because I did something not very smart, like name my new character the same name as my old character. Wasn't really thinking, just kind of going with it. Um, all in all, that's not horrible. And let's see, I have not touched DC Universe much, um, just for the mere fact that the whole switching up the, um, ways that we do our raids and everything else, as well as, um, the currency to get new gear has kind of thrown me off my game, so I'm not really looking to go run back into that and trying to pick that up, because, you know, it just feels like it's a little more tedious work for me, but, um, that, and I haven't gotten into, um, Defiance these last couple of weeks, just because I've been so busy doing this, that, and the other, that I'm happy to just now be getting back to playing some games. And also, too, I'm trying to fit in some new segments. So this is just something I'm trying, and we're going to see how it works. Because usually by now, my phone be about dead, and I can't do anything. So pretty much as right now, we got lots of rainstorms going on. This gives me a little time that I normally wouldn't have. So we're going to go from there to the next thing now. Um, that's pretty much the updates for the moment. And the next section is actually going to be a new section. Um, remember I was telling you that I was going to do something about verses, this and that? Well, this time around, I'm going to start with a simple one. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you what it is before I just move on over into it. So that way I don't have to spend a lot of time trying to get you up to speed, per se. But um, pretty much, um, your fanboys are allowed to choose. And it wouldn't be bad if you commented on this in the... Um, comment section and discuss this among yourselves because hey get into it get into it if you're not you're not but it was one that I saw on the net um, on one of the Facebook pages that I like and um, basically what it comes down to is um, in a fight who will win Punisher versus Red Hood and I'm going to pretty much dig up some information for those of you who don't know to kind of put it together they won't all be comic book um, characters are DC versus Marvel types of things. And some of these, you know, if there's a fight that already um, exists, you know, feel free to comment, let us know, and maybe, you know, send us to a YouTube, you know, thing so we can see, because that's the most important part. But um, we're going to start off with them. I'm going to go ahead and pull up some wiki information on both, and we're going to do a comparison as quickly as we can, hopefully less than 10 minutes. So, see you guys in the next segment. Okay, this is Versus, so... Hands up this time around, it's going to be the Punisher versus the Red Hood. Punisher is a Marvel character, and pretty much the Red Hood happens to be a DC character this time around. Okay, so we're just going to go down some basic stuff. And none of this is really going to be stuff that per se decides it, but it kind of gives you a description of each character. We're going to start off with the Punisher, um, a.k.a. Frank Castle. Um, porn Frank Castagillion. Team, Force Reconnaissance, Affiliations, Marines, because he is an ex-Marine, which there's no such thing as. Um, pretty much notable alias, aliases, Mr. Smith, Charles Fort, Frank Rook, Johnny Tower, Frankencastle. All right, his abilities, expert in military and guerrilla tactics, strategy, demolition, highly trained in both armed and unarmed combat, stealth and infiltration expert, special forces training, CQC expert, Vietnam veteran, peak human physical condition, uh, uh, condition, exceptionally high pain tolerances. <clears throat> so basically what this is, is he's the guy that won't quit. Been like vigilante, pretty much hunts bad guys and such, but doesn't mind necessarily putting one in a um, hero if they get in the way. Now it's not exactly what he does per se or anything like that. And I know probably a more balanced versus would have probably been him versus Deathstroke. But we'll get to that one. I promise you. Alright, so 
pretty much he's a one man army. He has some people who give him weapons and he pretty much takes care of business best way how. Um, very professional, highly unexpected, very much a tactician in the field and not exactly the type of guy you want to necessarily run into if you're already on his bad side because there's a good chance that you may or may not see it coming depending on how well he feels that you have yourself fortified. So, you know, most notable things is um, he pretty much kills regular street thugs and also um, organized crime figures. So he has no problem, per se, with, like, just getting in there, however, because he has hopped in, he has basically popped out of caskets and sprayed people up. Um, he has um, put um, tracking devices in drinks and sent the, um, the, <laughs> I'm sorry, the supplementary missile um, to also meet with that from a distance to um, certain people too. So he is a vicious guy. He's really an anti-hero type. So this pretty much jumped out to me as a good versus when he's supposed to be up against the Red Hood. Now, when I say the Red Hood, I'm going to get into the Red Hood. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and move it on into the Red Hood because he has an interesting um, backstory. All right. Okay, the Red Hood. Now, this one gets interesting. Now, there is a particular Red Hood that I'm talking about. And the reason why is Red Hood has been a handful of characters in the DC world. But um, pretty much most notably, he was originally the Joker. Which, um, to be honest, we've kind of seen that work out. The Punisher is capable and likely to kill the Joker. Because he's not going to play the same type of mind games with him. Batman's willing to play without killing him. But um, moving on. The Red Hood I'm referring to is the one from the animated movie Batman Under the Red Hood. Jason Todd. You know, the second Robin. The one that Joker killed. Okay, well first of all, this cat was brought back by Ra's al Ghul. And, like, and that's pretty much um, how he ends up here. He's basically the talented boy wonder that didn't have to have all the babysitting. So he's pretty much as proficient as Batman, but he's not Batman. Difference between him and Batman is he kills people. So, you know, with that, he's kind of has the exact same MO as the Punisher. You know, and yeah, he has a big issue with organized crime. Although he does not have a problem with forcing them to work for him, stack up cash, and then basically have them all assassinate each other either. Now that's a type of tactitional dirtiness that just does not come to any and everyone. Now with that being said, you know, like we said, we're putting him up pretty much against um, the Punisher. And don't get me wrong. The Punisher is the guy, you know, the type of guy who pretty much be on no nonsense. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is without all of that combat training, the fact that he was robbing and also the fact that he had no problem being up bad guys as Robin as a kid. And basically now he's like 20 years old, a teenager. He's an older fella, but he's younger than Frank. He's proficient with firearms and various weapons, as well as pretty much the Batman gear, as well as a very simple set of counter Batman gear. Um, specifically, I'm referring to the knife that he likes to use because <laughs> it cuts Batman's lines, um, too. Um, he knows to do things like cut lines before they pull a taunt to knock you out of the air and that type of thing. Something that the Punisher can do, but... I don't necessarily see him doing an everyday basis. So, pretty much it's the old, hard going, just um, unmovable but dangerous machine versus the young, I got something to prove, a little bit unstable, but I'm not going to let you get under my skin, younger dude. Now, here's where we pretty much really get into it, folks. Because a lot of people didn't like Jason Todd. But we're going to put all that aside. 
And pretty much at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move into where my opinion lies. I expect some people will agree, and I expect some people will not. And you know what? That's what the comic section is working out for. So you can tell them what you like and what you don't like. So that's what we're going to do. All right? Okay, so it's Red Hood versus The Punisher. <sighs> My bias instinct usually says, oh, that goes straight to The Punisher because he's going to get it done. He's Batman with the will to kill folks. Okay. My hipster, I like this new kid side of me, basically. is like, oh, the Red Hood would take it because he's younger and faster. Good point, but is it enough to really outskill the tactics of someone like The Punisher who has been known to rope a dope a younger, more agile fella. Not to mention, he has taken out some very serious bad guys in the Marvel world. And pretty much, if Batman had not intervened, would have assassinated the Joker. Which is something I can't say the Red Hood has done. So, when it comes down to it, the Red Hood doesn't mind killing bad guys and Phil. But I believe when it came down to it, where it'd be shot for shot versus, I do believe that the walking arsenal known as the Red Hood would take a loss to Frank Castle just for the mere fact that Frank's there to get the job done by any means necessary, if necessary. Now, I say that because, come on now, Punisher is a rather grim figure. They just recently made a character who was in that same M.O. who is worse than he is. To the point where even Frank's like, dude, you're doing this the wrong way. Now, with that being said, because like I said, both of these guys are basically Batman with the will to kill. You know, Batman using guns. Batman without his code of ethics 100% as far as when it comes to taking out danger. And they both pretty much look at criminals as vermin. But they kind of seem to look at suits as, get, them out, get out of my way or, I'll, or you die. Now with Red Hood, it seems to be definitely a stronger um, push towards you come at me, so it's self-defense type of thing. The Punisher literally will just let you catch one. So, you know, eh... There's been sparing, but it's kind of been like, because you survived it on your own type of way with the Punisher. And with Red Hood, I'm kind of waiting to see him get developed a little bit more. Because as you can tell, I don't read all the comics. So I definitely want some input on what you feel would make the difference in this. So pretty much for this one, I'm going to go with the Punisher. Frank Castle, just because, well, he's the get it done fella. So pretty much that's my versus one. Next time around, I hope to have something a little more interesting because I'm doing tend to keep doing this. And, you know, this kind of less than 10 minutes as I hope there would be. And we're getting ready to now move into the next segment because, yeah, that's what I'm doing is I'm basically putting together a show for you folks. And the next segment you'll like because it's movies. Um, I'm probably only going to do like two or three. I'm not going to get too heavy handed into it because, you know, I want this whole thing to still be under a half hour. I'm not trying to take up the TV time is what I'm trying to say. But um, with all that in mind, let's move on to the next. And I'm probably do this for a couple of weeks, maybe three shows like this, just to see if you guys like it. If you don't like it, we'll let it go. We'll let it go. If you do like it and I let it go, we'll bring it back. See how that works. Works for me. All right. So it's awesome. That way I can get all my opinions and everything out in a little bit of time. And that, that's, that's how I like to do it. So on to the next segment. Movie Reviews. Okay, first movie on my review list. Um, This one technically is for my other page, but I'm putting it on here because I'm just lumping them together. And it's not incredibly, oh my gosh, over the top gory. But basically the first one starts off, um, it's a, um, I mess up. It's a movie called um, Black Rat. Um, it's Asian horror is what it is. So basically, what it is is it's kind of a really twisted story um, of a girl commits suicide. 
and basically the six friends that know her who are all called to the school at night basically to come basically see about this thing that occurred. Um, in not so many words, um, they basically have all basically been brought there to be slaughtered, but a few of them actually get a few challenges as if it's an option for them not to be slaughtered. Not to be slaughtered. And also, too, um, when they first get there, only four of the six actually arrive on time. One comes late and the other one's already there. Um, it's revealed later that the one that they thought dies first actually does not die first, but is actually a potent part of the ongoing story. And it has some very unusual turns and twists because who, who it actually is kind of has to be explained to you in flashbacks. So this was kind of like a different take on sort of a, a slasher deal. It's not an amazing, oh my gosh, over the top movie, but I found it interesting. And it's certainly definitely worth a watch. So that's what I'm telling you. And uh, that's pretty much it. Um, next movie. Okay. This one's still in theaters. I'm not going to spoil a whole lot for you. If anything, I'm probably preparing you for some of it. Um, the name of it's After Earth. It's the one with Will Smith and Jaden Smith. Okay. I went in with a preconceived notion. My preconceived notion was, this is going to be a father-son buddy flick. They're going to end up on this messed up planet because they spaceship crashed. And they're going to go in. They're going to kill everything up. They're going to survive on this planet that they're not supposed to be able to survive on. They're going to have to have a bunch of moments where his father and son take care of each other. And the business. they all going to grow closer from this bad experience. And by the end of the movie, they're going to get saved off the planet. And they're going to pretty much all get a reward. And they'll be closer as a family. And none of that happened. This kind of did happen, but none of that really happened. Okay, now here's the breakdown of it without me going into spoiler territory. There are these creatures that came to Earth. They basically came to invade and they track everybody through fear by the pheromones that basically come out of you during fear. So the second you stop fearing them or you don't exhibit fear, they can no longer detect you. And apparently these things detect you completely by that. So they can't really see you very well and apparently don't hear very well either. But basically, since they ended up leaving planet Earth to go elsewhere, this planet Earth just became this pretty much anti-we-kill-anything-human-that-lands-here planet. So everything is pretty much hyper bred it now to kill humans. Not a big issue. Um, basically what happens is is they um, Will Smith is like a war hero and Jaden's his son. He's pretty much like top of his class but he can't get his shit together. I mean he can't get his stuff together. So basically what ends up happening is is he doesn't make it to Ranger which is what he was pretty much trying to be. So Will Smith comes home and basically, you know, finds out that his son is doing well, he needs a father. He's looking to actually come out of the battlefield and actually do some, like, civilian type of work and such. And that's real nice. Um, but pretty much, um, I think that's supposed to be his mother, suggests that they need to really get together and bond. Take him on your training, on your next little training mission, you know, have a little father-son time, get together. He, he agrees and pretty much they go. All right, everything's cool and whatnot, you know. Said, but, you know, Will Smith wakes up because he just feels something's wrong. And there is something very wrong. And pretty much this thing that goes wrong pretty much makes everything that was planned just go to crap. So basically, to make a long story short, they're transporting one of these creatures that can only detect you through your fear. And some of the Marines are telling Jaden about it. Jaden's listening, and he's scared to death of it, because, you know, he's still a kid without combat training. He ain't got his wings yet. 
So, you know, that's not really such a big problem one way or the other. But here's what happens. The ship ends up falling apart and crash landing. Will Smith is able to crash land it on the planet. The planet happens to be Earth. And boy, he knows how serious it is. And he lets Jaden know off the bat, you know, look here. We only survive if we can make it out here. I try to pretty much call off things, but there's nothing that can really be done from where I'm at. And by the leg, by the way, both of my legs are broke. So um, you need to get the other beacon. It's quite a distance away. I'm depending on you, and I'm going to keep up with you as you go do it. So he basically sends Jaden on this recovery mission to basically get both of them basically rescued off the planet. Okay. Cool thing is, it happens. No big issue, per se. Now, I'm really killing your spoilers here. Because Jaden has an adventure on his way to go get the, um, basically the big electronic signal flare. And he learns a lot. And by the end of it, he realizes that, you know, it's cool that Pops was this. I ain't got to live up to be this thing. I can go my own way. And also, too, fear is just in my head. Now, I really synopsized Living Daylights out of that for you. I wish the movie had been just a little bit longer and Jaden had been a little bit smarter as a character, not as a person, but as a character. Development took a little long, I felt, but all in all, yeah, it wasn't a bad movie. Okay, and let's see. I, I, I said I was going to do three. Okay. Personal issue. Call it a flaw. I don't know. But, um, what we watched was a movie called Mass Maker. Mass Maker is a movie from 2010. Very interesting movie. Um, what I can tell is in some rural area where there's bad telephone reception. But basically what it comes down to is we have the, this college student. Um, she's, it's her birthday. And pretty much she's just trying to get through her day. Her boyfriend calls her up and whatnot and he has a surprise for her he drives her to this house out in the middle of nowhere and tells her that hey it's your house I bought missing your name cause I love you so much and she's just like oh this is a piece of crap why, why, what is, why would you do this and then she realizes that it was for her and they trying to move forward so she's like oh okay this is so sweet Oh, oh, well, you didn't forget my birthday. Oh, that's so nice. Um, anyway, it's one of these things where the house is dirt cheap for a reason. Um, basically, here's how it breaks now. He bought the house on the internet. Um, pretty much, the house has not been touched for, like, decades, possibly a couple of centuries. But definitely at least a couple of decades. Um, basically the family that died in the house had a lot of crazy witchcraft like madness going on. So, they killed the witch, who they believe was the witch. Basically after apparently there was As he got older, got more physically grotesque because he has a disorder. Um, basically what it comes down to is, um, he kind of becomes like this non-dying zombie and pretty much there's a voodoo curse with his staff that keeps him in place so that he doesn't go around wandering and killing people. Now this looks like it's a rather low budget affair, but it works real well. I like the movie actually. Um, for the most part, um... Decent kill count. He kills probably about 10 to 12 people, no problem. Might be 20, because he killed, I'm assuming he killed the cops and EMS teams, too. But basically, um, it's a slasher. It's got kind of that leather face craziness feel to it. But it's um, got filed down teeth, so you can take it to dinner. 
It's not quite that out there and crazy, but it's different. So, um, biggest thing is, is that the people you kind of expect to die do die, plus some. And there is no survivor to take this to the next movie to a part two. So, you know, that was different and such, too. But how it took out the last survivor, oh, gosh, that was just messed up. But, mm, interesting movie. Interesting movie. As you heard, I kind of didn't really tell you a whole lot about it. It's one of those you need to watch it. Because it's almost about it's almost as much about the area and the house as it is about the story. And pretty much, um, it was definitely a slasher without any amazingly um, new kills or anything like that. Because, you know, you see, you see a handful of slashers. You kind of see them all. You know how they work. But this one, I kind of like the way it did because they kind of kept it simple. Took care of some new things. And this guy kind of reminds me of a southern version of Michael Myers. So, you know, that and the fact that he started wearing other people's faces. That was a weird twist where he just, like, show up with, like, your homeboy's face on, kill you too, like, oh, you don't know it's me. And it's like, it's weird. You you have to see it because um, you, you really have to see it. So um, that's pretty much my um, my thing. I'm done. Um, that's the movies and everything else. Um, I did check out those animes I told you I was going to check out too. Um Sea Control, I like it. Very interesting story, but it seems a little complex. Didn't like it as much as I did Psycho Pass. And uh, pretty much I'm, I'm going to decide on what I'm going to do next from those a little bit later. But thus far, I'm going to go ahead and put this up, let you guys see it. And I don't know why I'm telling you that, because this is going to be something that hits you after the fact anyway. But just pretty much, you know, I kind of continue to do this because I have a bunch of ideas and I like input from you guys. So you guys continue to keep on doing this for me. And I keep doing this for you. And also too, um, as long as you buy products, then that's definitely added incentive for me to go ahead and each week assemble something to try and entertain you on my channel. So with that in mind, folks, thanks for watching. I'll see you later. And remember, bye from PBKM. Because hopefully we got stuff you need. All right, man. Peace.